Are we all set for another exciting edition of Way of the Brush? I hope so. You better be. Hate to think I got out of bed for nothing today. Good morning, David. I see David, I see Tyler, I see Demi Dawes. Moldak? 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 I don't know. <laughs> and so welcome to another exciting edition of Way of the Brush. Probably one of the most informative painting shows you'll watch maybe other than i don't know you know i used to really like the bob ross shows um you know i really i'm i'm not a huge fan of bob ross but i i used to really enjoy just watching him paint and you know he uh he was just entertaining to listen to right cuz he's so calm and he's soothing and he's He's talking and, you know. <laughs> and so, here we are, yet again. And today, um, I have a few questions on painting flames. And so I think we might do a little thing on painting flames. Now, I've recently done a whole bunch of quick tips on painting flames. And so it might be a bit redundant for some of you vault members who have already seen it. But for everybody else, yeah, I'll do a quick one. I'll, I'll quickly showcase some of the other things that I've painted as well. Uh, especially so people understand kind of what we're going to be doing, I suppose. And so, yeah, I don't know, unless somebody else wants to see something else, um, you know, because that was on the menu today. Was I was going to show some free handing, some flames. Most likely in a layered approach, but maybe we do blending. I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's wide open, right? It, sky's the limit. But yeah, so I see everybody's talking away here. I see Saf, Safian, Siphon. I'm just going to call you Siphon. Safian, Saf, Vion, and David Battaglia, Demi Dawes. Pony Pledge is here. Oh, Pony Pledge is here. Oh, there we go. It, it, it's complete. Ponies here. It's complete, right? <laughs> we're all we're all here together now. <laughs> uh, shall we talk for like two hours and get to about no emails again? Um, well, maybe I'll talk a bit uh, for about an hour on just talking about not doing emails. So it all began. In the beginning of the internet, roughly about... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Demi does. You watch Bob Ross for his voice? That's a fact. Yeah, you know. Um, like, I'm not a huge fan of um, his his artwork. Because, you know, it, it's kind of that generic kind of uh, furniture store artwork that is just, you know is just it's just landscapes made up landscapes and you know things like that and but I, what i did enjoy about his program and about his style of painting was how efficiently he uses color and applies it to the canvas and it, a lot of it was brush technique you know palette knife um a lot of that kind of stuff and it, you know like his painting like a lot of the stuff from Bob, Bob Ross's um, videos, like his program he had, those brush techniques and such, you can apply those to miniature painting. And so when you're sitting there watching him uh, paint, you, there are things you that he shows in brush technique and, and use of color, you can apply 
to model painting. And in that small regard, he, he was a bit of an inspiration for some of my painting stuff. And yeah, you know, so, uh, dark side, Chris, can you do a set in blue flames? It Kunjo from the vault. It Kunjo. Oh, he, he's Kunjo. Like Kujo, Kunjo. <laughs> yeah, blue flames. Yeah, we can do it in blue flames. I don't see why not. I'm doing green flames too. But anyway, Tyler Bortel, Edo Gim Gum Gum. Great idea. I should try that. Well, I want to know what it is. I want to know what the great idea is. Chris Gill. Chris, any suggestions on painting an undivided warrior of chaos? Um, well, what in particular? Uh, often with undivided warriors of chaos, they're what? Often black. But I mean, you know, they don't have to be black, right? They can be red. They don't have to be the corn if they're, uh, if they're in red colors. Because like in uh, 40k, the word bearers are undivided and they're all red. So really, it's just pick a color you like and, and, and own it. <laughs> Just own that. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 you'd have to get a little bit more specific. Um, but, you know, paint it any color. I mean, if you're just going for undivided, paint it any color. You know, because it's like the, the the gods do have a certain color scheme. But you can borrow from that color scheme. For example, if you really like red color schemes, but you don't want to have a corn dedicated kind of army, you'd, you know, the, the symbol looks funny or, you know, something like that, right? You just like the undivided look, then, yeah. I mean, there's no reason to, that you can't paint them red and be undivided. Because, you know, your models, you spent the money, you paint them. Paint them however you like. Paint them chrome. <laughs> Although, because, yeah, if it's Warriors of Chaos, that's fantasy. What if you did them all, like, metals? And with rust, or you took like a 40k color scheme and applied it to fantasy, like for example, like um, Iron Warriors. You know, you painted up chaos fantasy chaos warriors like Iron Warriors. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas here. <laughs> take from what take from it what you will. <laughs> Tyler Bortelli. His idea was instead of painting flames. To paint with flames. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Paint with flames. That would be very dangerous. I'd have to leave that up to a cat like uh, uh, Gus over at Color of the Gods. <laughs> paint with flames. <laughs> That's a good way to ruin your brush. Unless, of course, you had a wire brush. Right? Right? If you had, like, the brass wire brushes, you know, and you were painting, and you had, like, I'm not, <laughs> don't do that at home, people. Don't do that. <laughs> and, yeah, so, everybody's talking away here. Ido, Ido, he, Ido, Agama. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to call you Ido. By picking a color you like, of course, Chris means pick purple. Yes, pick purple. Purple. Bright purple, as purple with pink highlights. That'd just be spectacular. David Battaglia, Chris, any truth to the rumors that you have some big changes coming up early next year? Uh, any truth that I have big changes? Or mini wargaming? Uh, I, big changes for me? I, I'm not sure. Big changes for the company? Um, I'm not, I'm not filled in, uh, as far as upcoming things. I sit in my office and I paint and I paint and I paint. And then I get up, take a stretch, sit back down. Guess what I do? I paint. <laughs> uh, so no, I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't get the memo. I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, apparently in the loop. <laughs> And you'd think, like, a guy as important as Chris would be in the loop, right? But he's not. <laughs> Dark side. 
LOL Java break. Yes, Java break. You know what? Good call, Dark Side. I, I, I can tell we're going to be buddies. Java. <laughs> Why is it called Java? Why do they call it Java? I don't know. I've often wondered that one. Why do they call it Java? It's coffee. Because it comes from a coffee bean, right? But, yeah. <laughs> Chris Gill, at the minute I'm thinking of blue and gunmetal, and I lost where he was. I suck at painting metallics, though. Well, um, didn't we do a demo on metallics on the show? You can go back. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's in the title. You can go back. I did a thing on, you know, painting metallics. Uh, there are more things to do with metallics, but... Yeah. Tyler Bortel, Chris equals Igor. Yeah, pretty much. I just, hey, yes, master. Yes, I'll paint this. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my brush. And let me get my models. And I'll paint. And I'll paint. And I'll happily paint. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Igor, Igor voice kind of hurts my throat. <laughs> Pony Pledge, mid click on the lighter and wire brushes. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, don't do it, dude. Come on. Come on. Let's use a little bit of brains. <laughs> Chris, why is the sky blue? Why is the sky blue? Because the atmosphere of what it's mostly made of and the way light shines through it and what the amount of light, because light is all uh, spectrum, and so when it's traveling through the atmosphere and the atoms in which it just consists of, we only see the blue spectrum uh, because the atmosphere, the density of the atmosphere. And so like when the sun gets to the horizon, it's going through the most atmosphere to get to your eyes. And so that's why you see red because red's at the one at bottom end of the spectrum and the atmosphere is blocking most of that light. And so that's why the sky's blue. <laughs> You didn't think I was going to answer that one, did you? <laughs> Dark side. It is a type of bean, I think. Oh, really? Java. It's a Java bean. Java bean. See? I, it's amazing, right? I can tell you why the sky's blue, but I couldn't tell you why Java coffee was referred to as Java. It's it's all where it's all where the information is stored. I have no idea sometimes where the information is stored. And it's not until somebody just kind of, Chris, why is this? Why is this? Why is this? And I go, oh, oh, wait, let me look. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you know? So, <sighs> I don't know. Hobby Hot Tips. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hobby Hot Tips. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Mr. or Mrs., but hi. Regardless, hi. <laughs> David Battaglia, because it is invented by Java the Hut. Is he real? I know, I know Pizza the Hut. Java the Hutt. <laughs> Michael Post, Chris or anyone, would Dryad Army work? Java, Indonesia? Yeah, is it? Yeah. Uh, a Dryad Army. Well, I'm not huge into fantasy. I only ever really played Bretonian. A Dryad Army, though, like, I would assume they're pretty tough, right? And, yeah. I, uh, I, th I think a Dryad Army. I mean, it would look cool, right? Especially if you start getting into converting uh, and you start, like, you know, the models... Especially if you have like the tree men and stuff like that, and you took like uh, wire and extended like their branches, and then you know you took um, like um, woodland scenics uh, flock and you know the tree treatment stuff, and put that on the models, and you did them in like fall colors or you know particular battle groups were different colors. For example, you know like there was a winter battle group where they have like no leaves. There's a fall battle group where their leaves are oranges and yellows and you know nice warm colors. You know, you had the summertime where he's just stark greens. And then you had spring where, you know, the trees had like little buds and fruit and flowers or, you know, what have you. That would be really cool. That would, people would go, oh my God, that is totally awesome. <laughs> Hobby Hot Tips. Move over, Bill Nye. Chris, the science guy. <laughs> I used to like Bill Nye. That, was, that show was was awesome. Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science guy. Edo. Yeah, let's go to college science. 
David Battaglia. Hi. HHT. H H. Oh, <laughs> Hobby Hot Tips. Jeez. <laughs> Internet nerd. Damn acronyms. <laughs> Moldak, Chris, I'm working on Space Wolves Army and going to use your tutorial on painting the armor. Could I use the same tutorial to paint the tanks? Greetings from Sweden. Yes, oh yeah, definitely. Um, you, you treat it a little differently for larger surfaces, but like painting large surface and small surface is like it's it's not it's not that dissimilar, right? It's uh, because on the larger surfaces you know, your edge highlights might need to be a little bit bigger, whereas versus on the model themselves, when you're doing the edge highlights, you, you're, you're using a little bit more care to get those edges right. And often with the Space Marines, you know, you're picking that Space Wolf gray uh, where it's kind of a blue gray and you, you're base coating in that and then your highlights are very, very small. And you always want to, like on the Space Marines, especially Space Marines and everything Space Marine, right? It's getting that base color down right. And, you know, I've said it a hundred times, get that base color down right. Everything else is a breeze. You know, it's, it's mastering that base color, assembly, cleaning your models, you know. It all begins there. A good model always begins there. Because immediately, you could spend hours and hours on a model, but if you didn't clean those mold lines right, it immediately takes the viewer out of it, and you're like, oh, look, at he didn't even clean that. Or, oh, there's a big huge gap there you know what I mean? especially if you're trying to go for a good a really high tabletop standard or display standard but yeah hobby hot tips it's me mini girl hobby hot tips is the youtube channel name sorry for the confusion well i wasn't confused i just didn't know uh it's just like if mini wargaming showed up on the thing it could be anybody right i mean it could be dave it could be matt it could be justin it could be owen who knows Pony Pledge. So is Chris going to be dancing with the stars? Um, you don't want to see me dancing. We got the um, Zumba class upstairs. And I've wanted, I've, I've, I've wanted the, all of us, the whole mini gaming crew, to go up and join them in a class of Zumba. And just have us all just, you know, sweat to the oldies kind of stuff. And, of course, film it for, you know, for your viewership and hilarity. But we haven't done it yet, and they've been open for a while now, and they get they seem to get busier and busier, and so, you know, it might be more of an inconvenience for them, or unless we just do it, like, we just have, like, a private kind of thing and just film for a bit, but, yeah, I thought it would be hilarious, because watching me dance, oh, man, that's, that's a sight. Watching Owen dance, can you imagine Owen dancing? He'd look like a little marionette, you know? I'm a real boy. <laughs> I'm a corporate puppet. David Battaglia. My wife uses Bill Nye the Science Guy when she doesn't have a lesson plan ready for elementary school kids. She teaches science. Well, but Bill Nye, I mean, yeah, he was great for, um, for you know, simplifying science. And teachers, you know, teaching stuff. A really good teacher can take really confusing elements and break them down to its simplest constituent parts and, you know, let people digest that. And, you know, that's that's often the best way. And Bill Nye, his show was great at that, you know. It was taking complex things, showing you how easy it is. And, yeah, because often, like, this with science and, like, you know, our relation to, like, the environment and everything around us, when you start thinking of things simply as the state of atoms, when atoms are really active and far apart, things are softer, warmer, and heat, and energetic. When the particles are closer and more compact, it's harder, colder, and so, yeah. And, and so it's, it's, it's all matter, energy. It's the state of atoms. Everything is the state of atoms. You know, things that we think are solid aren't really solid, like glass. Glass is not really solid. It's still a liquid. And it's just in a, uh, its atoms are very, very close together. But over time, glass is slowly uh, just settling back down. You know, homes like in the 18th century, they check the, the thickness of the glass. You know, the, at the top of the glass panel, it's very thin versus the very bottom because the glass is still melting, essentially. Anyway. <laughs> Danak 459. I think everyone would watch that. 
I think everybody would watch that. What? All of us dancing? Oh, I know you'd. I know you'd all get a kick out of that. <laughs> David Battaglia, laugh aloud. Pinocchio. Yeah, <laughs> watching Owen dance. That'd be exactly like put Pinocchio. Just because Owen's like a tall kid, right? But he's like, he's all um, sinew and skeleton, and so he's. Beep, 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 beep. Hobby hot tips. Do the dance classes ever interfere with filming? Yes, they do, actually. Um, not with filming so much as audio, because we're in uh, what, what used to be City Hall here in Welland, and it's an older building. It's a very old building. And so, as you can imagine, it's a very solid structure. And when people above you, and you got a whole bunch of people, and they're all pounding in unison, it creates a resonance. And the building starts to shake. And I have, uh, in my office, I have a door that's got a glass panel. And it's an older style door. And it just rattles. And so I, I, can't, like, I can't film anything with audio when that's going on. But that's usually only uh, once in the morning and then once in the evening. They have other classes, but I don't know. I could go get the schedule if you like, but. Oh, uh, laugh out loud, man. That would, Jay dance like that alone would be worth it. Yeah, watching Jay dance too. Oh, th man. And that guy, you know, when I, if I have my music playing in my office really loud, he'll walk by and, like, I listen to a lot of um, hard rock, heavy metal, things like that. Oh, various stuff. And he'll walk by my office and he'll be dancing. And that's a sight. And I, I wish, I should have my camera just constantly. I should have the camera. We should always have our cameras rolling. For, you know, for no, for whatever reason, because sometimes some people are so, so strange that you have to be filming them all day long because it just makes, it makes your head spin because it's, <laughs> David would tell you, glass gets that melty over, look over time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's because it's, it's still a liquid. All glass is, is essentially still a liquid. Anyway. Hobby Hot Tips, please send all of your super cool science questions to Way of the Brush. <laughs> I'm not that clever. I'm clever, but not that clever. <laughs> David would tell you, it flows down with gravity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like, it's, it's essentially, it's still a liquid. It's just a very extremely, I can't remember what the term is called, but it's an extremely slow um, liquid. But yeah. Pony Pledge, I got to eat breakfast. See you in 10. Well, what would you having? What are you having for breakfast? Breaking in eggs? You having a waffle? Maybe a bagel? <laughs> Hobby hot tips. That's why the building you guys work in is so epic. Yeah, it's the old city hall. David, tell you, you're, you're in the old city hall building. Does that make Matthew the mayor? Um, I'm sure in his mind it does. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes me the janitor. <laughs> um, dum 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 dum. Okay, so you know what? Let's get to an email since I'm always behind in these emails, and I actually am because I've got one here from. Uh, what the heck does that symbol mean? Oh, that's a stain on the monitor. <laughs> I got some symbol on my button here. It is. Somebody was drinking something too close to the screen. and it's... Anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is from Ian Powell. He sent this October 18th. So, yeah, I'm a little bit behind on my emails. <laughs> Hi, Chris. How's it going? Just a quick message to say I'm a big fan. Love your painting and your videos. I've learned a heck of a lot from you. And I wouldn't be where I am today without people like you. So, sincerely, thanks. Do you have any tips or advice on my painting? I'm constantly looking to, for ways to improve and to take inspiration from the community all over the world. And it's a Facebook link, Powerhouse Miniatures. Cheers, Ian. And you know what? I um, I didn't even click that link. <laughs> oh, I'm such a bad guy. You know what? Let's, let's open up the link. Let's have a look at Powerhouse Miniatures stuff. Holy moly. Well, he's got a nice old page here. Looks like he's into some airbrushing. And, oh, you know what? <laughs> you guys want to hear a good one? Oh, I, I wish I could show this on the screen here. Um, 
Okay, let's separate the window. Okay. But I don't know if you can tell. No, I can't. Wait. Yes, I can. Hold on. Oh, I just closed the window. Crap. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. Let me separate the window again. Okay, there we go. Click the proper link. Now, um, let me scroll up to the top of the page. And let me scroll over because this is going to be funny, guys. Just bear with me here. This is going to be funny. This is funny. Who didn't sign out of Facebook? <laughs> oh, somebody didn't sign out of Facebook. Now it's time to play with Owen's Facebook. <laughs> so anyway, Powerhouse Miniatures. Yes, uh, excellent painting. Awesome stuff. That's a really nice axe there. Did he paint that? What blended? Axe from a Skaven model took 30 seconds to mix the colors, put the glaze, Chris Edge highlight, just a test for now. That looks really good. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. That looks really good. See, and this is this is the kind of stuff, like, you know, that just kind of jazzes me up because, um, you know, when you see really great painters out there and they're just painting awesomeness and... You know, they go, well, you know, you were you were uh, a big inspiration for my work. And I go, well, thank you very much, sir. That uh, that warms the cockles. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Ian. And I did check out your models. And maybe I'll sign in as Owen again and I'll leave some comments for you. <laughs> I can't believe that dummy didn't sign out. What I, Owen? If you're watching this, you're a dummy. <laughs> and I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna sign you up for all sorts of inappropriate things. I think using your Facebook, leaving all sorts of comments. <laughs> we should we should just turn this whole show into destroying Owen's Facebook page. It just like s sending lewd comments to people and yeah. <laughs> Debbie does Chris the computer technician. You know what? Uh, yeah, I've I've dabbled in programming, um, you know, uh, a lot of CSS stuff. Uh, it's not C plus, um, you know. It's just the really hard. My my father was a programmer, and you know, he tried to pass off a lot of his knowledge to to, to me. And but like building computers, easy as cake. Building computers, you know, getting all of everything to work, you know, just taking junk, putting it together, and building a computer that works great. Um, you know, he turned me on to uh, Linux, uh, which, in my opinion, is like one of the best operating systems anybody can use. Uh, I don't use Windows that often. I only use Windows at work. I'm not a huge fan, Windows fan. Uh, I have a Mac at home, but that's mainly for production, my video production stuff. And, you know, but, yeah. Computer technician. Uh, buildings on the so uh, hardware side of things, you know, um, I really enjoy it. Uh, programming, you know, um, Really, just kind of like the the breaking in through security stuff, wireless uh, security was a hobby. <laughs> yeah. Danuk four five nine, leave a message on Owen's account saying, "Who forgot to log out?" Sincerely, Chris Way the Rush fans. <laughs> we should just uh, there's how can we sabotage Owen's Facebook? <laughs> Tyler Bortel, GTG, Chris, I'll be back soon. If you can wait to read my email till next week, that'd be great. Um, no, I'm going to read it right now, just because you said that. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Waterloo 745, hello. Well, hello, Waterloo. Hello, Waterloo. <laughs> Danik four five nine. Look through Owen's stuff. No. Although. No, I don't want to say it. <laughs> he put all sorts of inappropriate stuff on his study, on his account. <laughs> Saffon, lol. Chris will take a month to get an email. If you send it recently, it has at least like two weeks since I sent mine. Well, which one's yours, Seth? Because maybe. Oh, uh, you know what, Seth. As luck would have it, I'm looking at it right now. Would this be it? 
Hello, Chris. I've been watching you for a little while now, and I have found your tips to be quite a big help. All I can say is to keep up the great work, and I will keep up, keep watching. So if I do crap, you're not going to watch no more? <laughs> I remember seeing someone show you their first attempt at painting miniatures, so I thought I would show you mine. Some people call me a liar when I show them this, but I am serious when I say that this is my real first attempt at painting. I really do not count priming Chaos Space Marines black then dry brushing on bolt gun metal as an attempt. Well, it kind of still is, though. I feel like I, I green stuff the demon's arm. Uh, it's left to wear, <laughs> to a way where it makes it look good of not proportional to other arm, which, holy moly, lost my place already, <clears throat> to which was untouched. A lot, a lot of it was airbrushed, so I guess I am a cheater in some people's eyes. I personally think I don't do that well with the actual painting, like the demon sword. So any tips to improve would be great, because I feel like repainting this whole thing. I also thought about painting my Menoth battle box a different scheme. Would red armor, gold trim, steel gold exhausts, and black cloth sound alright? Yes, it would. I feel as it would stray really far from the Menoth is intended to look like. I am probably fretting about nothing though. I will send pictures of the Menoth color scheme when I finish that. Thanks for reading and thanks for the tips, Seth. And he was kind enough to send me some pictures right here. Here's his first attempt at painting. And it looks pretty darn good. Yeah, uh, you know, I like you can see the eye, uh, the airbrushing, and his left arm was green stuffed. Oh, to like reposition it, I guess. Oh, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, I like the little gray knight duder. I would assume you might have airbrushed that blade on his halberd. I could be wrong. I like it. It looks really good. Um, I'm not sure what you're not happy with. Um, just give me a second here, Seth, because I'm rereading your email in case I've missed something. No, uh, as far as your first attempt, like your early attempts at painting, um, it's a really good example. It's, you know, you got conversion, you got like the scenic base. Now, did you enter this into Golden Demon? Because, you know, it looks like a darn good entry, if you did. Uh, the rocks and everything like that, I would assume you dry brushed. Now, I could be wrong, but when dry brushing, like especially on bases, scenic bases, especially when you got such a little snow everywhere, an over, like a full-on dry brushing of everything might not be the way to go. Now, if you've got the airbrush, you probably can do a little bit more color transition, but dry brushing is really great at grabbing that texture on all the earth stuff. And, yeah, going for, like, a little bit more um, choice in where you lay out that, that, um, the highlights, you know, especially, like, on the ring the ring of chaos there that's surrounding the demon as he's coming through the portal, I guess. And, yeah. But, I mean, it's, yeah, if it's your early attempts, man, it's, it's, uh, that's a really great attempt. It's not an attempt. It's a, it's a good, it's a really good paint job. And if you entered that into a competition, I'm sure you would, uh, you'd turn some heads. Um, yeah. I like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. People don't believe you? Well, too bad. <laughs> Wow, now that you stumbled through my email, I feel like my email is full of broken English. Maybe I shouldn't type it up in like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Seth, you, you, you might want to proofread. Um, maybe leave the spell check on. Um, <laughs> but it's that's that's a great looking model. I like it. Um, I'm, you know... Uh, and as far as your Menoth color scheme, yeah, that, look, that would look awesome. Um, I, yeah, I, you paint your Menoth however you like. Like Owen, Owen's Menoth, his casters all have wings. So, you know, 
<laughs> anything goes. I mean, your models, you know, you spent the money on, paint them up however you like. Because the, the fun thing about War Machine is the model itself really has no bearing on the gameplay. And I think that's why often you see so many War Machine armies uh, not painted. Because really what's important is the base. Because the base, no matter what the model looks like, the base determines the, the space and volume that that model occupies. And so if the model was on a big pedestal, you know, and he's on a flight stand and the thing stands this tall, but he's only on a medium base, it doesn't matter because the rules are specific for a medium sized base. And so, yeah, go nuts, paint whatever you like, you know, um, you do a scenic base on the base, base on the base, base on the base, base on the base, the base, the base. <laughs> no stratos. You should do some Malifaux painting tutorials. I should. I should. I should do some. There's there's only so many hours in the day. Uh, you know what, though? I haven't. I don't have any Malifaux. I was in uh, London uh, oh, months ago visiting a friend. And we went to his, uh, his favorite uh, place to game. And they had some Malifaux models. And I was tempted to pick them up. I was also tempt up, tempted to pick up some of the X-Wing stuff. And this was before we started doing more X-Wing stuff here. And so that kind of squashed that. And so Malifaux, you know, um, yeah, Malifaux, the models are really cool. Some of them are are, are kind of, uh, you know, but a lot of them are very cool. I like the ones I really like and I'd probably pick up are the ones that look like the little uh, geisha girls. I like those ones. I have no idea what what faction they are or what, but I just like the models. And when I got into 40K, I just like the models. So I kind of went everywhere with the models. I just start, you know, what looked cool, painted up and, you know, stuff like that. So when you're getting into a new game, look at the models. Although War Machine isn't really like that because the early War Machine stuff, like the early models, they're kind of, they're kind of crap. <laughs> you know, I'll say it. Great game. But the models, meh. You know, now the models are starting to get a lot better. Like one of one of the nicest looking models in War Machine is the uh, Epic Krios. He's on a horse, and the model is designed well. The model um, fits together, and his seam lines are where he connects up. He doesn't have just that arbitrary seam line through the middle. It's like if you had the right and left half, it kind of cuts across and fall, like say for example yeah no it follows the line of the shirt or you know what i mean things like that like really it's designed really well and it, it looks great it's dynamic and yeah epic krios that's a, it's a really nice model for war machine even though i hate facing menoth stuff i hate menoth oh i face it too much oh 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 and that's probably you know what maybe that's why i'll i'll mess with owen's uh facebook because I hate men. <laughs> Pony Pudge, drop the bass. <laughs> drop a fat beat. <laughs> Michael Post, Chris likes Geisha Girls. I do. If I ever go to Japan, first thing I'm doing. Grammy Colin, which London, UK or Ontario? It was Ontario. Uh, that's actually my hometown. I'm, I'm born... And raised in London, Ontario. Um, then moved up to Sault Ste. Marie, which is northern Ontario. Um, anybody, probably, most of you probably don't even know or heard of that place. But if you look at a map of, like, North America, and you see how all the Great Lakes converge into the center, well, that's where, and that's where my uh, my home territory is, uh, Garden River. That's yeah, all, all of us Ojibwe's there. There we go. So, quick, uh, quick lesson. Quick, some quick... Chris, <laughs> quick Chris biography. I couldn't even spit that out. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so it was London, Ontario. Not the UK. Never been to the London, UK, actually. But, yeah. Wouldn't mind going um, to the UK. Well, even even Europe in general. France. Love, love to go check out France. Amsterdam. Spend a week in Amsterdam. <laughs> Uh, 
Pro. Man, I can't even say that one. <laughs> Rig, Rigwin? No. I'm not even going to try. Sorry. Ten Thunders Army? Uh, Ten Thunders Army? Um, I don't know what Ten Thunders are. Oh, is that, is that Malfo? I bet you that's Malfo. Ten Thunders. Because that's starting to sink in now. Yeah. I don't know. Is that what the Geisha Girls are from? Because if, if that's the case, then yeah, I'm probably going with Geisha Girls. Always go with the Geisha Girls. Uh, where are we now? Let's get another email. <laughs> Before I end up sitting here talking, holy moly, the time. The time flies right by when you're having fun. Uh, why is that even like that? Like, time flies when you're having fun. But, like, when you're bored out of your skull, it drags on. Because time is subjective. Cephon, if you were to play a Hordes faction, which faction would you choose? Well, I do play a Hordes faction as well. I play Mercs in, in War Machine, and I play Minion in uh, Hordes. I have Gators. Blindwater. I've got Malak the Dread, the Dreadlord, or Dreadlock? Dreadlock. Anyway, uh, I've got a, I've got a uh, Rassler, Bull Snapper, Swamp Horror. I've got two things of Gator Posse. I've got two Witch Doctors. And they said to me, Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ching, dang, wah, wah, bing, bang. And what else do I got? Um, crap, I busted into the song and I completely forgot what else I had in my Gator Army. <laughs> uh, yeah. Amsterdam? 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 Yeah. Pony Pledge. I feel like Chris would have feel the day in Amsterdam. <laughs> you know, like, when you go by publicity, as far as recreational activities and such, yeah, it's my kind of place. <laughs> Seth. London, UK is pretty nice. When it isn't raining like, when it isn't raining like rain from hell. When it's like raining like rain from hell. When, when it isn't raining, raining like rain, raining like rain, it's raining like rain from hell. Well, it's raining here right now too. Uh, had wicked wind. I think some storms, power went out yesterday around town, around this place. UK, London. Yeah. Like I, from what I understand, um, you get one day of uh, summer there, which is not very cool because I enjoy the sun. And uh, I'm solar powered, actually, you know, when it gets really cloudy and stuff like that, I get really kind of, you know, you don't feel like doing much. And when it's sunny out and it's like my favorite weather is when the air is cool and the sun is warm. I'm giddy all day long. The only thing I don't like is when it's humid, wintertime or summer, when it's humid out. It's gross because in the summertime, when it's humid, it makes everything sticky and hot. And you can't, you just can't get away from the heat. And in the wintertime, when it's humid, it the cold just penetrates through your clothing and it just chills you right to the bone. And it's just gross as well. So when there's too much humidity, it's just bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> Malifaux, Geisha Girls, Ten Thunders, Army Box. Okay, well then, there we go. So Ten Thunders. So yeah, if, if you know what. I, I have to pick up a box now. Amsterdam's actually a movie, as far as I remember, 1990s, I think, Dutch thriller. Oh, okay. I I was I thought it was an opinion on the place. <laughs> but it's a movie, okay. Well, maybe I'll have to check that out. Because um, I likes me some thrillers. And Dutch thrillers? <laughs> I was going to go somewhere with the whole Dutch thing, but... Never mind. <laughs> Michael Post, forget London. Peria and Adam. I mean him and don't have Geisha's Tokyo still on my list. Yeah, Tokyo. But like, I'd like to do the whole Tokyo, like Japan. I'd love to go. And uh, one thing that was on my on my you know my bucket list, as it were, um, Tokyo. I'd love to catch uh, a, a group like Kaido. Or Kodo, uh, with the taiko drums. I'd love to catch one of those performances live. Love taiko drums. Just the sounds great. Awesome. But yeah, Tokyo. And then uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm a great deal taller than most of them. So I, I, would, I would feel like a giant amongst 
all the Japanese people. <laughs> I'm sure it's a stereotype, but yeah. I'd have a lot of fun in Tokyo, but I, I don't I don't know a lick of Japan, so or Japanese, so I have like you know, I have to pick up some Japanese because I look like a complete schmuck around there. Graham Collin, London UK's overrated. Okay. I don't know, I've never been, so I'll take your word for it. If if one was to visit the UK, what is oh, you know what? Ha <laughs> ha. Um if I was ever on in the UK, I would definitely hit Ireland because one of my favorite beverages is distilled in Ireland. Uh, they have this big distillery and they have um, like a thousand year old cask. Not a thousand. I think it's like 500 year. And it's like a thousand dollars an ounce. And I'd, I'd love to go. But yeah, it's one of my favorite beverages and it's, it's distilled in Ireland and... Yeah, that's one thing I'd have to go check out if I was ever in, in Europe. Seth, okay, I figured out, no offense, but your dyslexia with my, well, not thought, typing skills equals a disaster. Haha. Ha. Uh, yeah, uh, any t anytime, uh, because, yeah, my dyslexia is atrocious. Actually, I don't even know if I am dyslexic, but I'm sure I'm not. It's just often I'm what I'm reading and what I'm saying are sometimes not the same thing. And sometimes, you know, words are just kind of, yeah. Edo, I was in London, UK in 2010 for one day and it was perfectly sunny. The rest of the week was raining, snowing, raining, snowing, snowing and raining. And then Icelandic volcano erupted. Oh yeah. The volcano. Yeah. Michael Post, Paris and Amsterdam. Yes. Paris. Definitely Paris as well. It, it would be a full-on European adventure because uh, I'd like to hit Spain. Um, one thing that I'd like to do, it's its completely retarded, but, you know, um, is the running of the bulls. Just to say I did it, you know. I'd probably get gored right in the hoop, but, you know. <laughs> Might change my voice a couple octaves. <laughs> I have to do way of the brush kind of like this. Kind of sound like Mickey Mouse. Oh! I <laughs> uh, kind of derailed my myself. Okay, let's do a email. And this is from David Smith. How to look through all the villi videos, videos, all the videos that I'm a Vault member and currently having trouble to get the smooth and nice blends across the model surface on my Drenna arm, especially on the smaller upper surfaces. And then he continues on with another email, which I will continue on here. Hi, Chris. Thanks for reading my comments I posted. I am fairly new to 40k world as I use to do scale tanks and such. I am struggling to get a decent visual highlight on my salamanders despite trying all sorts, edge highlighting, dry brushing, airbrushing, feathering, blending. My blending attempt to spare, to on a spare dreadnought arm, his morning after watching tutorial using the two brush blend method went badly. Also, I would like you to leave feedback. On my marines, the blends on the larger surface look better, but has brush strokes. I did thin the paints to milky sort of consistency. Also, while I remember any tips uh, for freehanding flames. There, yeah, that's that's where it was. David Smith. The freehanding flames thing. And so he has links here to his pictures. And I have the pictures right about here. This is this is going as smooth as sandpaper. Okay, so <laughs> and okay, so let's let's minimize up the little space marine fella first, and let's have a look at the spare dreadnought arm. And there we go. So that's as big as I can blow that up. Okay, so the blending. Now you're saying that you went with a milky sort of consistency. That may have been a little too thin. I find that the uh, when you're blending, uh, especially if like if you're not using any retarders, you're just doing a two brush blending. The paint when it's a little too thin, like a little bit of thinner, is fine. Like so, for example, you you put a one little blob of paint down on your palette, and you just um, took like a me like a, a a full load, not not overloaded the brush with medium. But just like you know, just dampen the brushes with the medium, and you mix that in, then that's about a good blending. 
uh, um, thickness. When it's a little too thin, it, it tends to kind of do its own thing. And yeah, it's, but that looks really good. Yeah, you can see the brush strokes, but yeah, you might have went a little too thin on the uh, on the paint, if that is what I'm interpreting there. Because yeah, you can still see the brush strokes, and it I it looks like you have like a. Now, did you lay down a base color first, or because it kind of looks like that? But I could be wrong. But yeah, no, it, it blend wet blending, especially when you're doing the two brush blending. You know, it is it is one of those, you know, practice things. Practice, practice, practice. So, first attempt, real good as a first attempt. Second attempt, you know, you'd like to improve, right? And so, this looks pretty darn good too. Yeah, it's kind of tough when you are uh, blending the panels and you're kind of going for like a non-metallic metal effect or, you know, what have you. Yeah, it, it can be kind of tough. Like the the edges, the corners look a little shaky. I don't know if you were blending or if you were layering that. I'm going to assume you were blending. And now it, it's really easy to clean up. But yeah, often when doing like those panel lines like that, often when I'm blending, I'll use the side of the uh, brush more than the tip. Uh, and it's, it's so that when the brush hairs, if they ever leave the corner then you're not uh, hitting into other panels because if you were blending and you're you know you're kind of like your brush is perpendicular to the surface you can end up hitting the other panel lines and then so when you're if you've already finished that one then you kind of have to go back real quick and try and you know correct it right whereas if you're using more of the side of the brush when you're blending then when the hairs kind of exit off the panel because of the angle they're not going to hit that other uh, panel that ang other angle uh, <laughs> if, if that's any kind of uh, help <laughs> I, uh, I, I likes English <laughs> I am so smart I am so smart S-M-R-T I mean S-M-A-R-T Okay uh, And Space Marines Now I can't get any zoomed in more on the picture But it looks really good Um yeah, yeah, probably only have one one light on that camera too. Looks like only one light. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little dark, and I can't quite zoom in any further using this. Uh, I'd have to, you know, view it outside of. But it looks good from here. Um, I don't know if you're if you're unhappy with it, but it looks good. I like it. Free handing flames. The free handing flames. Now. I'm going to just change gears a moment here. The freehanding flames, because you know what? You're doing, um, you're doing salamanders, and I, I don't know if you are a vault member, um, David Smith, but I do have a tutorial on salamanders in the vault. Let's zoom in a bit here, and let's see if I can't focus. <laughs> Focus! 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 Nope, wrong button. Focus. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so, Salamander, doing flames. Now, I do have a few tutorials on the flames. You know, it's really not, it's really not that hard. Basically, you know, you're starting with a white base because you have the black field on the shoulder pad and, you know, start with a white base. And then freehand up something. It's it's like with the flames often on the smaller surfaces, I'll start at the tip and bring it down. Or start at the base or like what the bottom of the fire is and then, you know, kind of like flick it and flick upwards. But yeah, have Salamander. I recently did a tutorial on this guy doing flames on this guy's cloak. You know, I was going to do like the black rocks and stuff like that, kind of like... um. If anybody's ever seen like the um, the high elf army, they have guys that have fire on their cloaks. I can't remember what the heck they're called right now. Phoenix guard. And then I had also done quick tip on this guy, painting the flames on his leg. You know, kind of legion of the dam kind of thing. And then also painting flames on a large surface as well. So 
I do kind of do, um, you know, my own kind of style with flames, and you know, but I do, but I do have tutorials on flames. I can still do a demo today on flames. Probably do it uh, blue just to keep things interesting. But yeah, uh, was that everything on that one? <laughs> uh, David, David, uh, David, I don't, I don't know if I answered your question. Was there a question in there? Oh, the free handing flames. Yeah, we'll do flames. That was just a quick run through. But yeah, we'll, we'll do flames. What time are we at? Holy moly, we're almost at the hour mark. Jeez Louise, David Battaglia, Chris, what are your recommendations for lighting models for taking pictures? How many lights do you diffuse with white, like paper, and what color backgrounds? Uh, when I'm taking photographs, we have a little light box. Now, we, uh, you know, it's, it's a fairly straightforward thing. But, okay, say, for example, a lot of times um, when I didn't have the light box, I used uh, my desk lamps. I have, you know, like, like the elbow kind of desk lamps things. Regular uh, f uh, daylight bulbs. So they cast just white light. But if you have the fluorescent bulbs or the energy savers, whatever's... <clears throat> Yeah, it's best to diffuse the light. Now, the easiest way to diffuse the light is taking uh, parchment paper and securing it over the light. If you have tungsten bulbs, don't worry. The parchment paper won't burn because parchment paper, like baking sheets, you know, um, they're really good just for diffusing light. And, you know, uh, I would, if you're taking pictures of your models, I definitely would recommend at least, at least two. You can do it with one. But you'd have to get a little bit fancy. Uh, for example, if you had, say, one light bulb, then you can bounce uh, like a white card and bounce uh, light off that, and that will give you a bit more light as well. But you're better off diffusing the light as as you do it. <coughs> and, yeah. You can do it with one, but you have to use some trickery to, to get uh, a good... What wattage of light bulbs... Um, I usually use only a hundred and then sixties as well. I used to, I, I always paint with sixties and, and I think like this studio light here is, uh, like a 110 or something like that. But, um, yeah, <clears throat> just a hundred watt daylight bulb. Uh, what, uh, color range? Cause they ha often have different color ranges. You want anywhere from, uh, uh, 41k to 51k that range because you, you'll see like where the, where the often some light bulb packages they'll have that little color bar as to where the uh, what spectrum it's uh, light it's producing and you want the one that's in that uh, light blue area it's that's truer to daylight truer it's not the same as daylight but it's you know fairly close Tyler Bortel crazy Chris I'm back hey Tyler I'm still here <laughs> Mr. Two, stupid daylight saving time difference with Europe. Yeah, was was it daylight saving last night? No, that's tonight. Oh, but you're already kind of no. Did I start the show early? All oh, the clocks say it's after twelve. Now I'm confused. <laughs> David Battaglia, parchment paper takes a high temp. Got it. It's for baking. Right. Yeah. Parchment paper. Uh, like it's cooking sheets. Um, parchment paper is really good because you make wet pallets out of it. Uh, it's great for diffusing light. Um, you know, you get yourself a big old roll of it for like a dollar and you're set for like a long time for your whatever painting hobby needs you need it for. You know, I should probably do a series on what we can do with parchment paper. Like as far as like models and things like that are concerned. That'd be kind of fun actually. Because it's really got a nice texture to it. When it's heated up, like, you know, to, like, the cooking point, it takes on a really fun texture. Not texture, but it browns and, you know, like, when you have it in the oven and it, you just, yeah. Uh, I don't know where I was going with any of that. Anyway, Mr. Two, the world should have just used the same darn weekend to change time. Yes, they should. Don't they? I don't know. David Battaglia, I always run into problems when taking pictures because the kitchen lighting fluorescent is awful and getting my CF bulb lamp 
Doesn't get the lighting in the right spots. Ugh. Yeah. CF bulb. Oh, just like the energy saver? Yeah. The fluorescent. But yeah, I mean, you can still uh, take good pictures with like regular kind of kitchen lights, but often they produce a yellow light. And so you have to adjust the white balance, if you can, in your camera. Uh, I know like taking using like a regular kind of, you know, DSLR uh, camera to take pictures, you know, you can adjust it. And even if you do uh, kind of get the colors wrong, then you can, uh, you know, put it into, you know, kind of an editing, a video, uh, photo editing software, if you have it. I don't know. I don't know what kind of stuff you're into, but yeah, <laughs> you just adjust the white balance. That's all. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really all about light, uh, especially for taking miniatures, painting, uh, pictures of miniatures. Mr. Two in Europe, apparently the daylight saving time is changed a week before you guys. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You guys already went up, uh, no back. Yeah, it's fall back, spring forward, right? <laughs> like fall back, fall down, spring forward. Right? Isn't that how it goes? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get to another email. Uh, hopefully, David Smith, uh, hopefully that um, I answered your question there. Um, and the flames, we'll get to the flames in a moment. I'm going to try and get through another email. Nick Dumont. Nick Dumont sounds like an actor name hello nick again i'm pretty sure i didn't do this email <laughs> it's familiar I, I think i had it lined up last week but i didn't get to it yeah because i only sh showed his drawing showed i, sh <laughs> I showed oh nick again <laughs> i have to give you big thanks because of the tips and tricks i learned from you i'm starting up a painting service for my local game store and when any customer asks a painting question and when when I'm in, they send them straight to me. Cool, that's cool. Steady hand mode and <laughs> steady hand mode and mini holders also is going to save one of my friends who has started painting and has some wrist trouble. Oh, okay, cool. I am jealous of her. Okay, first time out and she already has great smooth base coats. Now to pass, <laughs> now to pass the knowledge on. Smiley face. Orc knob was inspired by Sanguinar from Blood Angels. Grey Knight, Dread Knight, with a molten weapon, Viking in black ink. Oh, it's a Viking in black ink. Orc inspired Chaos Spawn. Okay, so this is his work. <laughs> and so his orc is Sang uh, Sanguinor from Blood Angels. That's cool. It's pretty bloody. And it's very cool that you're starting up your own paint service. That's very cool. It's tough, though. It's tough. Commission painting, it's a tough gig. I, uh, I wouldn't, uh, I've tried it before in the past, and, you know, it just kind of takes the life out of you. <laughs> Dread Knight. I like that blade on that Dread Knight. It's very cool. It's very cool. The Dread Knight. Now, the main plates of the knight, are they black or are they metallic, just really dark? Looks almost black. Because the gears and stuff look like they're bright metallic. Either way, very cool. Good contrast with the blade. Uh, the little shield on the thing. You know, it, it almost... Because the, like the blade, it's it, there's such a nice contrast there. I'm wondering like, if... If the lettering on the legs could have been a bit brighter, just so that the legs and like the lower half doesn't feel so bare. Like if you, even if you did the legs like molten or the legs and molten, but the uh, lettering looks like it was like hot, you know, like how you done the molting effect on the sword. What if the letters on the legs were molten? I think that would be kind of striking as well. And the chaos. No, wait. What is he? He is a orc inspired chaos spawn. And that's very cool. I like the three head thing. <laughs> this thing is very cool. Hold on. Let's zoom in a bit. Or expand it out. <laughs> I like it. It's scary. Um, should have some uh, tyranid tentacles popping out of them too. Just to scare the crap out of people. <laughs> 
But very cool. Dread Knight, awesome. Awesome work. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. It's awesome. Good luck with the painting service. I wouldn't... I wouldn't get into it again myself. Um, you know, like Jay... Jay has his own commission stuff. And commission painting is just a hard gig to get into. Um, there's, there's so many people out there who commission paint. And... Unfortunately, everybody has to uh, lowball the next guy, right? Because you want the commissions. So you got to drop your prices a little bit. Well, unfortunately, when you're a commission painter, you're not getting paid what your time is worth. And yeah, it's, it's a huge, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, that like the, like there's a few painters out there who are commission painting who do excellent work and they charge a lot and or they, they're not charging enough and that's unfortunate because a painter's time is worth so much more than what you pay so when it when you're getting a, a model for example you're getting a, a space marine character model painted to a high tabletop or even display standard <coughs> easily you should be spending at least at least Darn near $200 on that. If you were to pay according to time. If you were paying as to hourly rate. Because there's so much time that goes in, right? Uh, a Golden Demon paint job is easily anywhere from 50 to 100 hours. So it, even if you were paying him minimum wage, uh, you know... That's quite a bit you'd have to spend just on that, you know, that level of model. And, you know, when, I, uh, when I'm doing uh, graphic design work, you know, you guys will flip when you hear what my hourly rate is. It's, it's 40, but that's comparable to other graphic designers. It's 40 an hour. And, yeah, but that's, that's what you charge. Because there's all sorts of legality stuff, too, with that as well. Whereas with commission paint, there's no legality. I mean, it's just a service. <laughs> Mr. Two, let him listen. Chris, awesome voice, might soothe him. Let him listen. Chris's, Chris's, awesome. I don't know. Mortimus twenty seven. Buy all half to give food to my ten month old while you take care of that little ten month old. It's lots of fun. Besides, this is recorded. You can catch this later. <laughs> Go feed that baby. <laughs> Seth, Chris, I might suggest you start with a demo soon. Otherwise, you will have another holy moly moly moment. <laughs> Why? What time we at? One o eight Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, let's get. You know what? Let's let's do the demo. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Hold on. I need I need some coffee though. I'm uh I'm feeling a little. Slow. It's kind of hard to keep this the momentum, the momentum. It's it's all about momentum, right? Oh, <laughs> hobby hot tips. I can't wait to get an extra hour. Extra hour? What? The show? You're not getting another hour? Are you crazy? Are you daft? <laughs> Come on, woman. Are you daft? Holy moly! <laughs> David Battaglia, amen to the commission painting fees. I've done it and getting paid about two per hour. Exactly, you know, it's it's not worth it. I in my like that's why I I don't do a lot of commission work and it's usually just for friends kind of thing. And I tell them it's going to take me forever. Like if you don't want to pay a lot, don't expect it anytime soon. I've got a commission still sitting on my desk. <laughs> All I got to do is finish a scabbard on a sword. And I still haven't done it, and I've talked about it before and before, and I still have not done it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, and it's for a fellow over at um, in Hamilton. There, he's he's been in lots of videos. Um, uh, uh, oh, I haven't seen him in a while, anyway. But, <laughs> jeez, hobby hunters. I don't know how commission painters make money with all the time put in. Yeah, exactly. It's. Commission painters, like it's it's a it's a tough gig, you know, and you got um, services out there like blue table painting, and it boggles my mind 
how they stay open. Other than spreading the workout and, you know, like, just having so many people on hand. You know, I, I, I just... He's, he's figured out a formula for getting a work done. Now, you he does charge quite a bit, and for what you get, you know, it, it, off, like, it often seems like, well, that's all I got. I paid like $600 for, you know, 20 models, and that's all I got. And, you know, so I don't know. Oh, excuse me. I don't know. It's not a critique on Blue Table. It's just, you know, it's, it's some of the feedback I've gotten from some people who's had work done by them but anyway mr two chris extra s it's not chris ss chris ss chris ss <laughs> do you like working at mini wargaming <laughs> what don't you what don't you like also you are reading the chat upside down what Mr. Two, Chris, you like working at Mini War? I do like me working at Mini War Gaming. I do, I enjoy it. What don't you like? What don't I like? Um, I don't know. I don't like not having enough time, uh, and also, well, and also because of scheduling, um, for projects, I would like to be able to take more time in tutorials. I, I really wish I wasn't confined by a timeline in which a tutorial gets finished. That's what I don't like. Yes, if I if I had anything that I don't like about my job, it is that. I wish I could spend more time on a tutorial and take take uh, an idea to its maximum potential that I could think of at the time and not be confined by how long the project took me. But unfortunately, that means that that project would cost a lot more because for everything to work for as far as my tutorials are concerned and as far as you know me being a, a, a full-time employee and for the business itself to stay open, yeah, I can't spend a lot of time on a tutorial because I have to get them done so that they're cost effective. Whereas if I was to do a tutorial on my own, which I have been dabbling with, now I have been thinking of doing a, of a beginning to end kind of tutorial on my time. Unfortunately though, it would take a while to get done. So say for example, and I haven't even started filming, but say, I started filming today. Probably you're probably not even looking at spring by the time I'd be done. But it'd be like a full-on DVD. Uh, but yeah, I, I imagine it probably would take me that long just to get it done. Just free time, and you know, desire because it's my own time, and you know, like if I dedicated all my free time to it, yeah, it would get done a lot quicker. But you know, Chris needs to relax too. And I like playing. I'm a gamer. I like playing games. And yeah, you know, um, that, that also soaks, soaks up a lot of time. And you know what? I made the mistake of, I'll, t I'll, I'll give you guys a little secret. I made the mistake of buying Battlefield 4. And so, yeah, um, I'm already like level 15 right now, 14 or 15. 13? I can't remember. Anyway, but yeah. I made the mistake of buying Battlefield 4, and so that's been sucking up some of my free time. I played that all night last night, and yeah, uh, it's just. <laughs> so stay away from the video games, kids, because they rot your brain. They rot your brain and rob you of your ambition and your creativity and your free thinking. So stay away from video games. They are the plague of the 21st century. <laughs> grove and grove <laughs> whoa <laughs> grove and grove hi chris any tips on making eldar display board i'm terrible with the blue foam board blue board foam blue board foam 
terrible with it. Get yourself a wire cutter. Um, hot foam or fun foam? No, hot foam. Hot foam f- wire cutters. They're relatively affordable. They're like a hundred bucks for like a like a starter set, and they're great. You just plug them in. Got a little power adapter, and they burn right through that foam. Make whatever shapes you like. Great stuff. Great. And making an Eldar display board. Well, the hard part is always the concept, right? Display board. You know, you need what a two two foot by two foot board, and you want to have some Eldar like shapes. Unfortunately, you got to like you know flip around looking research up um you know how how to make something right because if you want to kind of go for a um eldar feel you know you got to have those organic shapes with hard edges because eldar is kind of like they got the flowing angles and you know curves but they also have abrupt ends and so yeah you gotta if i was if i was to you know come up with it then uh, it would be mine and I wouldn't share it with you because it's my idea. <laughs> David Smith, you play many PC games, Chris. I do not because I have a Mac at home and I only have Space Hulk and uh, Star Control. Star Control. StarCraft. Um, two on that. Which is lots of fun. I love StarCraft too. And I like Space Hulk. Space Hulk, when I just feel like doing a mission and, you know, uh, it runs really well. I have uh, one of them, uh, you know, Macs. It's a big 20, 27 inch iMac. I'd like to get a pro, but they cost a major box. <laughs> Tyler Bortel, hot wire foam cutter. Yeah, get one of those. They got nice little sets. They're only like 100 bucks or 100 and something for like the little starter set. And it comes with like a, like a pen one, one for cutting out rounded shapes. And so, yeah, really great. David Smith, I'm a design student. The foam cutters aren't nice in my opinion. No, you don't like them? Uh, well, then uh, you can go to dollar stores or what have you and pick up, um, you know, the big ex- um, the big razor blades, you know, the retractable handle plus. They're just cheap ones, right? But they, you can extend them out way out far. And that's what, I, that's what I used to use a lot. And But the thing is, though, is you have to get quite a few of them because the fresh blades, like nothing will dull a razor blade faster than styrofoam. Um and it just takes that edge right off and so when you're cutting with a nice fresh blade on foam it cuts really nicely and you can do lots of good shaving and you know shaping like that and then yeah but then you have to change the blade really fast because as soon as you see the first time that that razor blade will will catch and it will pull on that foam and create those little you know those little drags as soon as you notice that you got to stop using that blade you gotta stop let the blade go use it for something else because it's still pretty sharp, but for foam cutting, yeah, you you got to use fresh blades all the time. And unfortunately, when you're working on big pieces of foam, uh, the insulation board, and you're going to make a display board, which is you know big big piece, and you're going to shape it and such, yeah. So, but yeah, go to the dollar store and you can just drop you know ten bucks on like ten sets of those ex- retractable razor blades. Oh, I can't even think box cutters. Like a box cutter, right? And they have the big, you know, you can snap the ends off, right? Because, you know, people are always, you know, you're just supposed to retract it out a little bit, you know, use it, retract it back in. And when it gets dull, you snap it and, you know, you retract it out further. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's like those, right? <clears throat> and, yeah, th- those are really great for working with the insulation board. Uh, now, the blue and pink, you know, those are different grades of foam board. And I think the blue is not as dense or it is denser than the pink. I can't remember. One of them is a little denser than the other. The blue and pink. But anyway. <laughs> Maz Fanatic 1169. Oh, do those foam cutters work well with foam board? I always struggle to cut long straight edges for fortresses on my Lord of the Rings. Uh, foam board? No, because foam board has paper. Foam board is two pieces of card with foam, uh, polystyrene foam in the center. And so those foam cutters will not cut that because it's paper or card. So don't do that because you probably will start a fire. <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. No, you're better off, like if you're working with foam board, fresh razor blades, razor blades, best way. And 
if you're wrecking up the board and you're seeing the foam or the paper is like pulling and it's tearing and stuff like that, it's because the blade is dull. You have to use fresh blades. And styrofoam dulls razor blades really, really fast. So you got to change blades all the time. You're always best with fresh razor blades. Um, Michael Post, Chris, would white bark red leaves dried forest be cool? Yes, they would be cool. They'd look like, uh, like birch trees in the fall. Actually, uh, if you go with white bark, kind of yellow oranges, because not often do you see red on birch. Well, I guess you do. Yeah, it all depends. But yeah, red, red bark. No, white bark, red leaves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pony Pledge, Game of Thrones. David Smith. Can't get either in the UK without paying a ton. Um, can't get either what the foam or the cutters. I don't know. David Smith, blue is less dense and used most frequently in my design models. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So blue is less dense. Yeah, I I, I know the two colors. There was a difference in density, but yeah, because then you you also get the the regular white stuff that comes in like you know the your IKEA furniture and it's got like you know the big things. That's for making like filling out hills and things like that. Like it's all right, but otherwise it's a little too soft. You always want the like the dense foam board or uh, styrofoam insulation board. Yeah. All right, let's do this demo. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Get my trusty, rusty painting shirt. For any of you who wonder what I do when I'm cleaning my brushes and dry brushing, I just use an old shirt. It's an old shirt, doesn't fit. Or it was like one of the kids' shirts and they don't fit. Or, you know, there's a big stain on it. Whatever. It's a throwaway shirt. It's a rag, right? It's a cleaning rag. Well, I just use an old shirt. It doesn't have to be black. It doesn't have to be white. Although white would help because that way you can see the color and, you know, what you're doing, right? But anyway, when I'm dry brushing, this is all I do. Is I wipe it onto a shirt. It's better than wiping it on myself, I suppose. <laughs> and, yeah, I just leave it in my lap. And, you know, it, it also, when I'm, you know, drying off my brush, I just use the end. So, like, one end of the shirt is often just, you know, for wiping the excess water off and such off my brush. And the other end that is sitting up on my knee is for uh, when I'm dry brushing. Because I always, when I'm dry brushing, I always wipe my brush on my knee. Why that is, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. But, yeah, that's why I do it. That's how, that's how Chris paints. Holy crap, it's almost 1.30. Well, it's 20 after, but cheese. Cheese Louise. Okay, so we're going to do some blue flames. What are we going to do them on? Let's do them on. Let's do them on the Space Marine because it's fairly small. And we'll grab some colors. Let's hang out my, got my tray of colors here. Got all sorts of colors in here. Got all, got your paints right here. Got your paints right here. Okay, so we're going to do blue, right? What kind of blue? We're going to do Altdorf Guard Blue. It's kind of like an ultramarine blue. It's kind of got a little bit too much white in it, I think, eh? I don't know. Oh, no, it's not too bad. It's kind of rich. The outside of the bottle lies to me. Sometimes. Um, blue, or let's go with a turquoise? No, Lothern blue? Yeah, we'll need some Lothern blue. Because that's going to be our bright color. And how about purple flames? I haven't done purple flames. Some Cantor blue? Let's, let's work with Cantor blue. Let's just use, um, actually, to keep things short, I guess we'll use some Teclas blue as well. Yeah. Oh, we'll need white too. Let's use some white scar. Or ceramite white. No white scar. Yeah. Is that all I need? That's all I need. I don't know. <laughs> so, follow me over to my painting desk. And, uh, yeah. Let's, let's paint. Let's paint something. Okay, so. Painting flames. Now, I've... Like I've said before, I've recently done tutorials on these for painting flames. And 
You know, there's for some of you who are vault members have already. Uh, although I think the, the the cloak, the fire on the cloak, I don't think that's been posted yet. So, but vault members, you can watch for that one. That one will be coming out soon. Actually, I don't think I think that one's going to get pushed back because we're doing um, quick uh, <clears throat> magnetizing, magnetizing. Mini war gaming is doing magnetizing this coming week. That's a that's a little secret for some of you who are watching. <laughs> magnetizing is coming up. We're gonna do it. We're gonna have magnets. There's gonna be a whole bunch of magnet uh, magnet tutorials. Man, I I did a whole bunch. Some of them are really fast. Some of them, you know, some of them seem kind of obvious. But you know, you gotta have some of the obvious stuff in there because well, people are gonna ask, right? Because, like, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'll say it a hundred more, hundred times more. Everybody's learning at different rates. And so what seems fairly obvious to some of you might not be fairly obvious to another. So with Blue Flames, <laughs> just completely changing gears here. Blue Flames on a model. Okay, if your, if your model was, make sure I'm in frame here. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, you know what? Give me two seconds here, people. I'm going to turn this off so that the camera doesn't keep jumping around on me. And focus. Focus. There we go. Okay. If your model was fairly light, like white, then it's going to be pretty straightforward, right, to paint blue flames. You probably won't need to um, do a white base because these brighter flames... On a darker surface, had, you had to come in with white first, and because we're working with a fairly, you know, solid opaque color, on even on top of a dark color, we're probably not going to have to do the white. In fact, we can probably just start right in with the blue. So let's start with Cantor blue. Where's my medium? Where's my medium? Where, in fact? Is my medium four score and no. <laughs> it must sound like I'm cracking up in here. Eh? Okay, so let's go with some Cantor blue. Cantor, Cantor blue. Yeehaw. Probably more than I need, but that's okay. Now, some of you. We're going, well, Chris, I don't use medium. Well, you don't have to, but medium's really good. Medium, uh, I've said it before, say it again, say it a hundred more times. Uh, it keeps, when you thin the paint down, it keeps the paint feeling like paint. So it's a fairly, it's a fairly heavy load on the brush. And often when I'm just, I'm not gonna use a lot, but I just wanna control the consistency, I'll often mix into the paint as I work on a palette. Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of you probably don't use palettes when you paint, but you should. <laughs> you should. So, flames. Small surface like this, uh, I most likely will start at the base of the fire and bring it up. Now, I can do this kind of like how his is. His is? How how I did the fire on this guy. So let's just start with, now there's a big obstruction here. There's a big bullet mark. You know what, actually that's gonna suck. How about this side? Uh, this side's got a big bullet mark too, you know what? Ah, screw it, I'll paint it on this side. <laughs> okay, start the base, and then I usually just bring it right up. And this side, I just kind of bring it and just a little halfway. Basically, you're com you're creating an asymmetric design. It's just, uh, you know, you're. It's a bit of balance and a bit of not a balance. It's um. That's really freaking hard to see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm concentrating on what I'm doing here. <laughs> that little hole on his shoulder pad is kind of messing me up. 
it's a ba- a flame is basically like an asymmetric design. Like there is a bit of balance to it, but the way it flows, you know how it how it's going like that up through its center, and then this little half finger kind of comes up, and it kind of completes the whole design. Yet you know there's still balance there in design. There's still you know it still feels the same, but the way the you know the fingers move about. So you're always ca- trying to look to create that kind of balance in the design of it, you know, you know, all those different, you know, techniques and such. But anyway, let's get to some techless blue. Now we could always blend these colors together, but when you're working on small designs like this, you often don't need to blend. Uh, you know, I mean, like we could mix this color right in, but it's not completely necessary because you're probably doing this for like rank and file. And let's grab a little bit of medium. Mix this in. That's yeah, it's pretty good. And again, um, yeah. So we're highlighting this. We want the brightest color at the base of the flame, right? Because that's it's kind of like a candle, right? It's like where the where the fuel source is, and that's where it's burning, burning brightest. So that's what we're simulating or emulating when we're painting this. So we are going to bring it up and the lighting is not completely the best in here. So it's kind of hard to see, but I will endeavor to push forward. And so, and often it's just like when you have say two fingers, you know, like one long finger like that, and then one short one. You kind of want to have a rounded uh, space, uh, connecting point between them to just keep it feeling organic. And that's the other part about fire, is that it is organic in nature. And you always kind of want to keep that feeling. You want you want it free flowing. You don't re- really want it restrictive, right? Next, we're going to jump into some Lothurn Blue. Lothurn? Lothurn. Loathing. Loathing Blue. (laughs) Fear and loathing. (laughs) We're going to slap a little bit onto the palette. Obviously a little too much paint, but you know what? Um, I don't care. It illustrates the point, right? Grab a little bit of medium. Actually, that's too much. There we go. And just mix it in till we get the right consistency that we want. See, I usually just draw it out on the palette like this, just so I can see how it's moving. And when I have, when it's running too clear like that, then I just come in, grab a little bit more paint, and yeah, see there. Now it's at the consistency I like it for this kind of work. And again, let's just start. Let's start from the top this time. I'm still in frame here. Yeah. Okay. And let's just color right in. And we're going to bring the bright color right to the bottom. And this side as well. Kind of work this stuff centrally. <laughs> it looks kind of choppy at the moment. Uh, just because all the silly um, <laughs> battle damage that's on the model. <laughs> I should have grabbed a model that had a smoother surface. But I didn't have any that were primed in the color I liked, so I, that's why I chose this guy. <laughs> and next, we're gonna grab some white scar. See how that how fast that one just went by? Well, this one's gonna be even faster because we're gonna take quickly take this uh, white scar and we're gonna chuck it into the uh, Lothurn blue, and we're gonna mix these really fast. Get a nice light color here, lighter than Lothurn blue. Um, if I had the edge paint, I would probably use the edge paint because this is probably closer to what the edge paint looks like. Um, I don't know what the heck that color is called, but and grab a little bit of medium, little bit of medium, and let's just throw it right in here. Let's get this down, and there we go. There's oh, too much crap on there. Too much, too much. You got too much paint on the brush. 
usually wipe it off really fast uh, just because you know protect the brush and you see when you draw the paint into the brush how I only go about halfway up the bristles when I'm drawing paint and let's go right from the center here and we're gonna create kind of like a little crescent shape kind of like this is the center of the flame and it's burning and it's hot it's a blue flame it's like um oh what kind of fire methane natural gas there we go <laughs> natural gas fire and there we can take that even to a white but i'm kind of digging where it's at now and that's essentially it that's freehanding a fire design it, it would look a little bit better if uh if i was painting it on a, a smoother surface but um yeah <laughs> here let's see if i can't zoom in a little bit more here zoom in whoops too close too close yeah that's too close okay a little further and focus 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 no not focused there we go that's focused enough ah that's enough so there you go blue flames on a dark when you're using a dark color if you're doing this uh with green you could start off with say with like a caliban green or like a, the old dark angels green kind of thing and work your way down or work your way up to like a yellowish green kind of um kind of going for a yellow green right if you were to do it in pale colors i'm not sure it would have that same intensity give it a shot if you're using green uh for example with this blue if i had to painted it in um you know using like uh, bleach bone to brighten it up i'm not sure it would have had the same intensity as well but yeah there you go that's quickly painting flames hopefully it helps some of you kind of you know get the idea uh, on you know how to create the shape you know how it's laid out and kind of like because really like it's what style of flame you're you're going for as well when on the models going for like a realistic flame is not it, does, it just doesn't work quite as well it's really got to be more of a stylized kind of fire Real, realism just doesn't quite look as striking on the models than uh, a more stylized design and often it's you know it's your own style right and so people immediately can tell your models from somebody else's models and often it's you know your own identifier right and yeah oh color of the gods is here what's happening man me too i use lemay and medium um okay me too <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm not part of i've missed out on a conversation i think <laughs> tim harper i need to get out some more need to get some more medium i ran out water just ain't the same yeah once you start using the medium uh for you know some more detail control kind of work yeah water just doesn't cut it anymore uh for a long time i used water and thought it was just fine and then started using mediums and then it's like oh 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 that's how that works and you know so yeah if you want to you want to get better at your painting don't be afraid to experiment use the mediums you know you don't you don't use that much really i mean like they sell you this little wee pot right and you know you're supposed to thin your paints down with it and i mean like i've been using this pot for a while and, and it's still still pretty thick although it looks kind of yellow somebody spitting in my pots <laughs> as fanatic it keeps the color so smooth i used to use water for years lol but i'm done using water to thin them down well i still do use water to thin my paints uh when i'm applying base coats and things like that where i'm just not too concerned with uh control because really that's that's where you want the medium is, is you're concerned with the amount of control you're having over your colors and painting well is about controlling your colors now that seems kind of counterintuitive to the whole art thing you know art is uh, art man it's all about the flow the colors and you know let nature progress and you know things like that but 
<laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, you want you want to get uh, better control over your colors. You start using medium. <laughs> Damn Hopper. Yeah, water works fine unless you're using metallic paints. Yeah. Oh, metallic paints. Yeah, metallics and thinning your metallics down, which you should still be doing too. But yeah, using water, yeah, it creates a funny separation in the pigment and the medium. And so when you use medium, yeah. That's when I really started really um, started becoming uh, more used to mediums was because when I was thinning down metallics to get my base coats down, I stopped using water and started using the mediums because to get a nice, good, smooth metallic finish, like just for the base color, start using a medium right off the hop, especially for you Grey Knight players, Iron Warriors, anybody who's using a lot of metallics. Stop thinning with water. Start using uh, medium, and uh, you'll find that your, your base colors go on far better. Your highlighting will go on better, you know, while the layering anyway. Dry brushing is still dry brushing, but, you know. Uh, Howard Hughes or airbrush paint reducers like Wicked Colors. Never used it. Non-paint reducers. Not sure. Color of the Gods. So what's your opinion on airbrushes? LOL. <laughs> yeah, I caught that video, dude. And, uh, yeah, you, you stirred up the hornet's nest on that one. <laughs> That's good. Hey, right, man, I, I agree, like, uh, with a majority of your points on airbrushing. Um, the not requiring skill, though, I, I still feel that airbrushing uh, does require a degree of control and skill to use. Uh, you can't, kid just can't come out the gate, pick up an airbrush and, you know, paint uh, award-winning models. But he'll probably get there a little faster, you know, once he starts mastering it, right? But, yeah. But otherwise, no, I, I agree with the, like, how our airbrush, and, like, one point, and I've said this before, um, in other videos, maybe on another show, and I, I think I said it too as well, uh, I was, uh, I did an interview with, um, Demon Jester, and, um, it, he was asking, you know, it was, we got on the topic of airbrushing, and airbrushing is... You know, it's it's got its uses. It has its place within our hobby, but as far as the mark of a really good painter using an airbrush, no. Because I find with airbrushing, when everybody airbrushes a model, the personality is lost. Like when you compare, you know, uh, by painted miniatures, the way he paints models. And somebody who, uh, you know, who airbrushes a lot, like uh, less, and you put those two heavily airbrushed models side by side, you can't tell which painter painted them. And uh, that's my biggest problem with airbrushing, with everybody using airbrushes in this hobby. And I'm a great painter because I can use an airbrush. Well, yeah, but none of your personality is in the model. And it's actually a compliment to me. When somebody says, well, they can tell that I painted that. They can tell that that was because it was painted in my style. Because I do heavily, uh, you know, brush paint. But people can tell that it was painted by me. And that that is a compliment for me because they can tell. They can see the personality of the person in the painting. And often when you go to an art gallery, that's what people are looking at too. When they're judging uh, or when you're just looking at art in the museum you can tell the painters who painted them you can tell van gogh from monet and you know completely different things but you know it's but it's the kind of things right so yeah hello gods gotta go buddy i have to go to dinner lol well enjoy your dinner howard hughes i had a question a few comments up i hope you get to it um okay well, I'll have to I'll have to track that one down real quick there, Howard, if I can. Tim Hopper, did Owen P in your medium? He might have, he might have. <laughs> Tyler Bortel, Austin would disagree. Disagree. Austin would disagree. Yeah, he would, but 
you know, it's opinion. I mean, this is just my opinion. <laughs> when everything's airbrushed, like when, when the models are all heavily airbrushed, you line up anybody who, who's like, we, we should, uh, you know what, I'll do a comparison, okay? And I'll grab, I'll grab a bunch of heavily airbrushed models. I'm not talking every painter, every model that they paint is, is, is not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when models are heavily airbrushed, when the airbrush has been used extensively on the model, you cannot tell that model, that the artist's work from another person who's done heavily airbrushing. You cannot discern the models apart. Who did, who painted what? That's what I'm saying. That's my point. When models are heavily airbrushed. <laughs> Pony Pledge, I'm going to GW soon. Well, have fun. <laughs> Pony Pledge, just off topic. Uh, where are you from? Anyway. Not that I'm going to start stalking you, kid, or anything like that, but... <laughs> MIGS 6357 What do you think is the worst type of model to paint? Like monstrous creatures, vehicles, etc The worst type of model to paint? Uh, none I, I don't feel that there are worst models to paint Worst models to paint are the models that you don't like the look of That's the worst model Is when you look at the model and go Ugh, ugh I don't want to paint that That's the worst model uh, But yeah, I don't have... Um, I don't have a, a, a worst model. Like, I'm not, you know, like really tiny models, like Epic, you know, remember Epic scale models? Those don't concern me. I painted those, you know. I used to have a big Imperial Force for Epic, but anyway. Um, but yeah, like large models, like I'm currently getting together a, a big 12-inch figurine that I'm going to heavily airbrush. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to heavily airbrush a, a big model because uh, I feel that I need more practice at airbrushing because I'd like to explore airbrushing to to its limits, to what can be done with it, what can't be done with it, you know. Like, almost anything can be done with an airbrush, but you know what can't be done with an airbrush that can be done with brush is painting very quickly from switching paint colors to you know what i mean switching gears you can't do that with airbrushing very quickly unless you had a whole bunch of airbrushes but you're talking five airbrushes that's like a thousand dollars and you have five airbrushes just sitting around and you have load them with color and switching between them all and then you obviously have way more money than <laughs> time <laughs> pony pledge SC California. Okay, well, cool. Yeah, there's like there's it's pretty big uh, GW area. There's like a isn't there still a battle bunker down there and something? But yeah, Seth, I wish there was a privateer press store like GW. Well, I don't know if they ever will because there's so much involved with having all those franchise stores, right? I'm sure it'd probably generate more money for them. But aren't they like in Wisconsin? There should be like a privateer press store in Wisconsin, right? I'm pretty sure they're in Wisconsin. Anyway, they would tell you San Clemente, San Clemente. That's fun to say, San Clemente. <laughs> yes, yes, he is in San Clemente. Okay, well, let's all start stocking Pony Pledge. He's in, we know where he is. We know where he is. We'll we'll find him, and we'll get him. <laughs> Mass fanatic. I wish there was a Warlord Games store here in Texas. Yeah. Warlord games. Who? Uh, what? What games do they make? I don't know. Fire Drake eighteen. Chris, still waiting for that anime paint style video or cell shading. I know. Well, and I haven't. Because the thing is, is I haven't tried it out myself. <coughs> because I've looked at certain styles, and the hard part is coming up with something that conveys that without looking like you only did one highlight, right? Now you see some cell shading where you have the base color, then they have this borderline where the where the uh, the shadow begins, but then you have that slight transition in there, as well. And so it's yeah it's, I'm still conceptualizing it, and yeah, it's it's still it's still in the in the uh, in the con concept phase. I'm still brainstorming it. I, I, I want to do it because you know why I want to do it? I'll tell you why. Okay? Don't tell anybody else. Okay? In fact, 
Everybody else, you got you got to you got to turn off your computers right now. Can't watch this no more because I'm gonna t- I'm gonna give out something here. Reason being that I want to try this this uh, cell shading t- uh, style out is uh, for Robotech because I'm a big Robotech fan, and yeah, the Robotech game it will be coming out soon. Like I know they already had their Kickstarter and you know stuff like that, but yeah, Robotech. That's why. I want to have a cell shaded Robotech looking army because I, I had it on um, Robotech on the GameCube when I was really jonesing for some Robotech and it it had that nice cell shaded look in the game and that's what I'd like and imagine like the terrain being having that kind of animated cell shading look yeah David Begalia LOL Tim Tim Harper Warlord Games Mantic oh <laughs> Mantic yeah Mantic. It, it might as well be like uh, Mantic. Like I like l- a lot of their models, but often it feels like they're just um, like knocking GW stuff. I mean, it's not any worse than, say, for example, uh, Avatars of War, where they're blatantly, you know, <laughs> infringing. I don't know. I don't know if they're infringing, but <laughs> no, because it's all base concepts, right? I mean, it's it's why it's why anybody can really make. Space Marine stuff. Space Marine stuff. Because, you know, Games Workshop doesn't own Space Marine. Like a Marine in space? They don't own it. Mass Fanatic. Chris, Warlord Games makes Bolt Action, Hail Caesar, and other historical minis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, another one, too, is Flames of War. I, I, you know, like I was always curious about that one. I wanted to get into it. A few of the guys around here were playing it. And, uh, you know, but the thing was is that the prices were just a little too steep for my liking. For what you got, you know, like three battle tanks or three like, you know, panzers. And it was like, I think 50 bucks. And I'm like, really? For three little panzers that are made of resin? And, you know, like they're not full on model kits. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting cheap in my old age. (laughs) Holy moly, it's almost two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. (laughs) Um, Tim Hopper, or maybe not Mantic Warlord, definitely do bolt action though. Yes, okay, yeah. Pony Pledge, dang. I don't know. <laughs> Fire Drake 18, I think Harlequins might be a good test models for anime stuff. Yes, and I still have my Harlequins, and a lot of them are not base coated to. Uh, but the thing is though, I, I overprimed my Harlequins, and so they have this kind of like slight bumpy texture to them. I, th- I was thinking of stripping them down. They're, they're metal still, so, you know, it's. But I've been meaning to do a quick tip on stripping, so I might do some of that. And also somebody in the vault had asked about Star Wars, like painting the Star Wars models. And so I was thinking about some quick tips on that one too. Um, stripping down the plastic, like the, or not the plastic, but the models, like the Star Wars models. Um, you know, X-Wing, the X-Wing game. Stripping them and then repainting them. Because I, like, I'd like to do the Millennium Falcon, you know. And I've seen some interesting color patterns for like, you know, how there's smuggler ships and stuff, so... Yeah, Fire Drake 18, awesome with the RL, but Robotech, cannot wait for that. Maybe Macross, though. Yeah, I know. I'm Robotech, I'm, I'm excited for that game. It, it looks kind of, you know, like the game mechanics look all right, but the, the models themselves look really good. Like, they look good. And they're pretty big. Like, I was surprised at how, how tall the Veritech uh, uh, fighters were, like the Valkyries were. Uh, you know what? I think, I think we're done for the day. I really, I don't think I can do any more damage, and we're almost at the two-hour mark. And I slot this program for only two hours, so I'm not sure if YouTube would just abruptly end me. You know, if I did, but oh, oh so yeah, I think we're gonna be done because I we're just kind of jibber jabbering, and yeah, I like Robotech. So hopefully, anybody found the the painting demo today on fire. You know, somewhat informative. For those of you who hadn't seen it before, um, it's kind of a rundown of what I did. Kind of not in the tutorials. I go into a little bit more depth. Um, yeah, but keep sending those questions, comments in. Let me hear from you. Yeah, I'm I'm behind on them, but you know what? Hey, I'll get to it eventually, right? It, it's it, it's why you guys keep coming back because you know you you want to see what kind of crap suggestion I'll come up with or (laughs) something right (laughs) 
<laughs> and so, yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done for today. I don't know. Uh, you know, questions, comments, emails, send them in. Chris at Mini Wargaming or send them through YouTube. Um, what you guys like to see demoed, you know? Don't be afraid to ask. Even if it's something, you know, you, you, that might seem simple, you know? Don't be afraid. Because, you know, I've said it before, like everybody learns at different rates and... You know, we all get at the, we all get into this hobby. Like today, like the entire time that I've sat here talking today, somebody got into the hobby. Maybe two people got in, just are just getting into the hobby and have yet to even hear of the, any of this stuff. And so, yeah, let that sink in, right? <laughs> and so, this is me saying good day. Take care of your brushes. They'll take care of you. And I'll see you in episode 20 next week. Same channel. Same time. Come rain or shine. <laughs> or hell and high water. I don't even know what that means, hell and high water. I, I don't know. I don't know some of these expressions sometimes. And so this is me saying good day and take care of your cigars. And... <laughs> that was such a crap uh, Bill Clinton impression. No, I did not have sex, sexual relations with that woman. 